The name of this video is Photoshop in Blender, Part 6, Depth of Field and the Z Buffer. One of the more compelling special effects in digital photography is depth of field. Depth of field, sometimes abbreviated DOF, is the capability of making our brain concentrate on an object of interest by blurring objects that are not of interest. In addition, we might want to further emphasize the object of interest by enhancing its color or its contrast with its surroundings. You see depth of field everywhere, in advertising, television, and in the movies. In this video, I'll show you how to create depth of field in Blender's 3D world and unveil the secrets of the mysterious Z buffer. We will see how the defocus node is used to accomplish depth of field. In the process, I'll introduce you to the normalize and invert nodes that give you more control over the Z buffer and set the Z buffer up so that the defocus node can use it. This will prove to be important in the next video when we apply these techniques to enhance a 2D image. This time we'll keep the default cube. Not only will we not ignore it, it will be the star of the show. We'll add a yellow material to it. I'll align the camera to a, the view. Control Alt Numpad 0. Now I'll add a monkey. Shift A Mesh Monkey and move Suzanne along the x-axis so she's separated from the cube and in back of it a bit. I'll give Suzanne a red color, smooth her, and add a subdivision surface modifier at level 3. Then I'll press Shift Z to add another Suzanne and move her a bit along the x-axis so she's separate from the original Suzanne. I'll do this one more time. I'll render the scene. I'll left click and drag around the objects in the render view. Notice the Z values. The object further back in the render have higher Z values. I'll click and drag on the background area in the render. The background pictures have huge, for all practical purposes, infinite numbers as Z values. Just like a real camera, the Blender camera needs to be set up for depth of field. With the cursor in the 3D view, I'll switch to front view and press the home key so you can see how the camera is positioned. I'll select the camera. In the Object Data section of the Properties window, there's a panel called Depth of Field. In the Display panel, check the Limits checkbox. This displays the focal range of the camera, what the camera sees as a straight line from the camera to the cube and beyond. In the Depth of Field panel, I'll select the Object drop-down and select Cube, which is the object I want to have in focus. I could also have set the distance in Blender units at, to where the focus should be. I'll select the cube and press the Z key to go to wireframe mode. Note the crosshair that shows where the depth of field focus is. Now I'll switch to the composite setup and check the use nodes checkbox so that we're in the compositor with the render layer node connected to the composite node. We're going to look at the Z buffer which is available from the Z socket of the render layer node. I'll connect the viewer node to the Z buffer to visualize it. It's all white. Why is it white? The reason is that the pixel Z value anywhere in the scene is greater than 1. It's either associated with an object, in which case it's somewhere between 10 and 40 Blender units or so, or it's part of the background, a number in the millions. As far as an image goes, all these pixels get converted to white. In order for the Z buffer to be processed correctly, the image needs to be a grayscale image with values between 0 and 1. The Z buffer needs to be converted to a normalized vector with Z values between 0 and 1 in order to work for defocusing. The way to do that is to add a normalized node and connect it to the Z buffer. The normalized node scales all the values of the Z buffer with the exception of the background, which is assumed to be infinitely far away, to values between 0 and 1. I'll add a normalize node, Shift A Vector Normalize, connect it to the Z socket of the render layer, and connect the viewer node to the output. Now the cube nearest to the camera is nearly black, while the monkeys have a progressively lighter gray color. The background is still white. The actual defocusing is done in the defocus node. I'll add the defocus node, it's a filter node, by pressing Shift A Filter Defocus. I'll connect the Z socket of the render layer node to the input value socket of the normalized node, and I'll connect the output value socket of the normalized node to the Z socket of the defocus node. 
By default, the use Z buffer checkbox is unchecked because it's possible to create your own Z buffer and connect it to the Z socket. Since we're using the actual Z buffer, I'll check the use Z buffer checkbox. I'll render the scene. No blurring occurs. That's because the degree of blurring is controlled by the f-stop slider, which by default is set to 128. I'll reduce the f-stop value down to about 96 or so. Reducing the f-stop a little actually goes a long way. I'll render the scene. Now there's a lot of blurring. The only problem is that the effect is the opposite of what we want. We want the cube to be in focus and the monkeys to be progressively blurred, not the cube blurred and the monkeys in focus. The way to fix this is to add an invert node, Shift A, Color, Invert, which inverts the color values. Black becomes white, white becomes black, dark gray becomes its corresponding light gray in the image. I'll add an invert node, Shift A, Color, Invert, and connect the value socket of the normalized node to the color socket of the invert node. I'll add another viewer node and hook it to the output color socket of the invert node. Note that the grayscale image is inverted. The cube is white and the monkeys are progressively grayed out. Now I'll hook the output color socket of the invert node to the input Z socket of the defocus node. Now we have the desired depth of field effect. The cube is in focus while the monkeys are progressively blurred, depending on how far back they are from the camera. As with many of these filter effects, it's possible to overdo it. I'll reduce the f-stop to 10 and render the scene. The blurring is really extreme. This might be what you want, but more often a setting of around 100 for the f-stop should be enough. Sometimes a subtle depth of field effect does wonders for making your renderings more realistic. So that's what's up with the z-buffer and how it works in the Blender 3D world to achieve depth of field. Now that we understand what the z-buffer is and how it works in Blender's node system, we can use it to achieve depth of field on a 2D image. That's what we'll do in the next episode of Photoshop and Blender. See you there. Happy blendering.